What was the aha moment for Cloudflare? You know, I had started another company that was um, that was in the anti-spam space. was not was not particularly successful. Still, kind of muddles along, but w- but wasn't particularly successful. And we had a really amazing engineering team uh, without a whole bunch of amazing things for them to do. So we would come up with these sort of side projects that were you know just ver- various things to keep keep the team busy and, and entertained. So we predicted the winners of the Sundance Film Festival in advance using Bayesian statistical analysis. Today we'd call that AI, but it's, it's all just statistics under under the hood. We built a browser plugin that would like switch your Google cookie with other people. Uh, this is before Gmail and, and those things. And the idea was it's really hard to keep Google from getting signal because the very nature of if you type something in, it's what you're searching for. But the best, so that you can't eliminate signal, but if you can throw enough noise at it, that's another way to prevent tracking and preserve privacy. So so we had that, which was called Lost in the Crowd. And then we we, we actually, for um, Paul Graham, who's someone a lot of your listeners will, will know, um, Paul, before he started Y Combinator, um, would host a, a conference at MIT called the MIT Anti-Spam Conference. And he would invite me to come out and speak. And, and one year I was trying to figure out what to talk on. And I was I was talking to an engineer on our team at Unspam, which is the name of the, the old company. And I said, hey, could we build a system that would track basically how spammers harvest your email address online? Uh, and that turned into something called Project Honeypot. It allowed us to pull together a bunch of of data, like things like if somebody is, you know, a spammer for, are they also spamming for, you know, fake university diplomas? Um, the answer is no, by the way, people, people tend to specialize. Um, what's the length of time between when a spam crawler harvests your email address and then when you get the first spam message it averages about a week but but sometimes it's been as long as like six years and sometimes it's been as as short as you know a a few seconds and so we could track all of that we built this thing you know gave gave kind of a talk at paul's conference got written up and wired and a bunch and then sort of put it in the corner and forgot about it and over over the years about a hundred thousand people signed up for for this thing you know the number one request was can you not just track the bad guys could you actually stop them and to be totally honest, like I ignored that, and we we're like, "That's a dumb idea." Why, why did you think it was a dumb idea? I because I, I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't. I, I was like, "That sounds hard." And and at the time, we, we thought it would have to be software, where it would be like a Apache plugin and writing Apache plugins, and Apache was being updated, and it, it just didn't. It didn't seem like there was a really clear path on how how to build it. I'd take a, a sabbatical to go to business school. L- largely because the the company that I started got sued and it was a whole I mean, a whole whole big thing. And I I met Michelle who was uh, so Lee uh, Michelle and I started Cloudflare, but I met Michelle. I was trying to pitch her on idea after idea after idea, all, all of which, by the way, in retrospect, were terrible ideas. At some point, I was telling her about Project Tinypot and how people wanted us to you know, build the thing, stop it. And, and it was actually Michelle who was like, "That's the idea. We're building that." And so it wasn't really even my aha moment. It was it was actually Michelle's. 